ever watched a horror movie that was supposed to be about building your own PC? Yeah, me neither. But I have seen enough real life PC build horrors to last a lifetime. Hey, I'm Craig, Managing Director at Utopia, an awesome computer manufacturer who also have a couple of PC retail stores selling parts to enthusiasts. And today we are diving into the magic of fitting your very first motherboard, sharing all the things we have seen first time builders do wrong over the years. Strap in because we're about to turn those potential PC building nightmares into a dream come true, sharing our top 15 tips for getting your motherboard fitted without a hitch. And hey, stick around to the end for a tip so golden, it might just save your build. First up, case of the bent pins. Picture this, you're gently dropping the CPU into the socket and then disaster. Those tiny pins bend into an intricate mess. Whether you're Team AMD or Team Intel, remember this. Your CPU is not like your smartphone, they are not designed to drop and your CPU socket is even more fragile. Match the CPU notches on the socket and let it snugly fit with no pressure. Oh, and for a pro level tip, Keep the little cover on the CPU socket even after you've fitted the CPU. Then when you lower the handle down on the socket, the cover will pop off and you'll be good to go with minimum risk to those fragile pins. The next up, we've got thermal paste. Some say applying thermal paste is an art, some say it's a science. I say it's a bit like putting ketchup on chips. Too much and it's just a soggy mess. How do you put the thermal paste on? Well, it's gonna differ from CPU to CPU. We would recommend checking your CPU online just to see what the recommended trick is for your particular model. But do keep an eye on your fingers unless you want your PC to look like it's been through a fingerprinting session at the local police station. Number three, it's all about the case standoffs. First time builders have a knack of not working out where the standoffs on the case need to be positioned. Best case, this means your motherboard isn't secured properly. Worst case, the board shorts. Please count the standoff holes in your motherboard, then count the standoffs in your case. Same number, great. Present the motherboard to the case and ensure you can now see the standoffs through the holes on your motherboard. If you can't see one, that means the standoff is in the wrong place and you're gonna need to remove the board, reposition the standoff and try again. At four, we've got the missing power connection. Not connecting the CPU power is a super common first time mistake on a first time build. Located at the top left of your motherboard, the CPU power connection seems obvious, but it gets missed all the time. Without this connection, your PC will power on, but it will not display. Simply connect either the four pin or eight pin connection from this PSU to your motherboard and you will be good to go. The five is technically linked to four. More powerful CPUs require more than one power supply connection to the motherboard. Skimping on the power supply mean that you might only be able to connect one CPU power connection to your motherboard. While your system will still work, you will find your performance reduced. If your motherboard supports two connections for CPU power, do yourself a favour, pair it up with a power supply that supports powering both connections. On to six. If you plan on using an all-in-one water cooler for your CPU, make sure the fans in the pump are connected to the correct headers on the motherboard. Connecting the pump power to the wrong header on the motherboard can lead to performance issues and overheating. This simple step sees a lot of first time builds coming into a workshop for support. Motherboards usually have a dedicated header for water pumps, so please check your motherboard manual for the best place to plug in your new fancy water cooler. Number seven is all about the IO shield. Some motherboards come with the IO shield fitted to the motherboard out of the box, but may require you to fit the shield to the case and then fit the motherboard. These IO shields are little metal tabs sometimes and they kind of hold the shield in place over the motherboard. But without due care and attention, these tiny little tabs end up inside your motherboard ports, potentially causing problems. Often this doesn't get noticed until your PC is fully built and nobody wants to have to undo all that hard work once your build is completed. It's definitely a case of check twice, fit once. On to number eight. The USB 3 header harks back to an age of PCs when building a PC had way more risks. Power supply switches were live, edges of cases were sharp as knives, and ports broke even if you looked at them the wrong way. Modern USB 3.0 header pins are super fragile. Make sure you present the cable to the motherboard the right way round and be gentle when connecting it. 
If you push too hard, the pins will bend and you will potentially have lost use of that port on your motherboard. At nine, we look at CPU support. While your board might support the CPU you have bought, the buyers might need the latest revision to post. First time buyers are best to buy a board that will work with their chosen CPU out of the box. But check the manual for instructions how to flash the BIOS without a compatible CPU, a feature many new motherboards now support. This feature will require access to a USB stick and a functioning PC, but is very straightforward if you follow the instructions. At 10, most motherboards have preferred slots for fitting RAM. If you fit the RAM to the wrong slot or slots, your RAM will 1. possibly run in single channel mode, but worst case scenario, you actually not get a display. The system will power on, but you won't get a picture. In most cases, it's a simple case of removing the RAM and refitting it in the correct slots. Once again, check your motherboard manual for the recommended slot configurations. Now on to 11. When fitting aftermarket coolers, you will have multiple bags of mounting hardware. It is super common for first time builders to use the wrong combinations of screws and brackets and spacers. This can lead to overheating processors and reduced performance. This is one area where I would highly recommend reading the cooler's manual thoroughly to make sure you've installed the cooler correctly. Maybe even watching a YouTube video of someone installing that specific cooler. Now on to 12. At first glance, the Type-C connector on your motherboard looks as if it can be installed both ways round, but it can't. Care needs to be taken to get the orientation correct. We have seen users force the connection the wrong way around and unfortunately, break the connector on the motherboard, which nobody wants. Now unlucky for some, 13 C's is double check our RGB connections. ARGB connections have a missing pin, so you can't go wrong. But simple RGB can be fitted the wrong way around. Please check your connections if you don't see any lights on your RGB fans when you first turn on your PC. Look for a little arrow on the RGB device connection and line this up with a 12 pin, 12 volt pin sorry, on your motherboard and you will be good to go. For our penultimate tip, number 14, the little wires that come off the ports and lights at the front of your case are super fiddly. The great news is that if you get them onto the wrong pin, you're not going to do any harm. As a rule of thumb, the power and reset switches can be connected either way around, and the power light and hard drive light need to be connected with the plus connector on the pin closest to the rear of the case. The installation of these connections isn't always the same on each motherboard, so once again, double check your manual and the printing on the motherboard just to make sure you've done it right. Wow, 15. I can't believe when we first thought this video we thought it was going to be short. Well here it is, the crown jewel of tips, the one you've all been waiting for, and it is test before you build. Imagine assembling a puzzle only to find the last piece doesn't fit. It's totally heartbreaking. Assemble your motherboard, CPU, cooler, RAM, GPU and power supply outside your case. A test run on the bench saves you from trying to troubleshoot in cramped confines of your PC case. You will thank us for this. When you need to reseat RAM or other components, having everything running open makes your life so much easier and makes problem solving so much more possible. And that's it. Intrepid builders, this is how you be avoid becoming the star in your next PC building horror flick. Now, do you have any PC building horror stories of your own or perhaps triumphs? Drop them in the comments below. We'll love a good story. Now, if this PC guide was any good and it saved your sanity, please hit the subscribe button or hit the like button. It's like a high five to us and it means that we can continue to bring these great videos. Check out the next video for more PC building wisdom from Utopia. And in the meantime, happy building.